2002 or thereabouts, well, my country Sri Lanka went through the worst economic crisis in its entire history, caused due to, well, decades of mismanagement, waste, corruption, you name it. And, well, you, that's something you can read about elsewhere. That's not the focus of my channel. But, yes, we, the general public, who are not as privileged as the, well, the upper class lot or the powerful, had to endure things like 12-hour power cuts every day days long queues for fuel and so on so for my wife and i who work from home as freelancers we needed power to run our computers and our internet and that's where this little fellow came in it's a mars river kp3 dc smart mini dc ups now this thing has saved our hide so to speak a lot because it ensured that we could keep the home fires burning of sorts and at least have money to survive you know we had a little baby son at the time also he is now a little three-year-old son and we have a daughter too. But at that time, it was really difficult. And so yeah, something like this was a lifesaver. Why I chose the KP3 is because as you can see, it has multiple voltage outputs. Because I need 12 volts for my fiber optic router and 9 volts for my Wi-Fi router. I'm running a separate setup there simply because the fiber optic router supplied by Sri Lanka Telecom has absolutely shit Wi-Fi. Excuse my language there, but it's ab abysmal. So you need another router which is a tp link unit that i'm using which has much better signal strength and speed as well that simple change you know really massively imp improved my internet connectivity and speed and reduce latency too but yeah so to power all those things this little gizmo is doing it and it's got a 5 volt usb which i used for my little home weather station too but i noticed that yeah after three years of use this thing wasn't having the battery backup it should it was lasting a mere 45 minutes or less instead of the five or six hours I could expect out of it. Natural, I mean, lithium ion or lithium batteries do degrade over time. So I had to get under the hood and see what was going on. So I've already got it half open here because it's such a pain to open it and then put it back that I figured I'm not going to fully close it until I've done the repair or the battery replacement and tested it too. So let's just lift the cover. Very simple. And there is the battery. And you can see it's a bit swelled up too which is a concern because you know these lithium batteries are pretty dangerous things so the battery being swelled up is a concern for me and another reason why i'm replacing it so there we have we've got two cells 5800 milliamp hours according to this uh, sorry 5000 milliamp hours according to this and uh, now this is a bit misleading because if you look at the mars river website they clearly show what appear to be cylindrical cells inside this thing but when you open it up this is what you see so yeah, a bit of misleading advertising over there going on, which I didn't know about until I cracked this thing open. So it's always a good idea to open things like this up before you try to get replacements. And I got my replacement batteries right here. These are from uh, Daraz. They are a set of 18650 cells, 5800 milliamp hours. Both are matched. In fact, when I ordered them from the same seller, I was initially received a mismatched pair. So I returned one and got a refund. That way, Daraz has been very good to me so far. And then I ordered the same cell from another seller and got the matched pair. So you can see it has got wires already attached. So I don't need to bother with that because I do not have the necessary uh, welding thing that you need for attaching wires to these kind of batteries. And uh, the reason I got a matched pair is because you can see that this has three connectors there. Battery plus, BM and battery minus. Now BM stands for battery middle. So what you've got going on here is you've got the two batteries are connected in series but there is a center tap for them called BM. Now this is something I verified with a YouTube video that showed battery replacement for this exact same model. If I can find that video again I'll definitely link it in the description. But that was really helpful because I had to figure out first okay does BM mean battery management system or battery middle and that solved the conundrum for me. So without further ado let's get into replacing the batteries of this thing. So here we are, I've got everything I need. I've got the KP3 here. I'm gonna keep the cover out of the way for now. I've got a pair of wire cutters. I've got a solder sucker. Yes, I say solder as to people in who speak British English. Americans say solder. I don't know why that is. I mean, why not just say it the way English says it? But they say solder, we say solder, and I'm gonna be saying solder, as I usually do. And uh, here is some solder. Got some tape too. And, well, my soldering iron in a soldering iron holder. And another little useful thing I've got over here as well, which I'm just going to show you as I get it out of its uh, plastic 
bag is this it is for cleaning your soldering iron on so like what you do is you would clean your soldering iron as so otherwise you know plastic and this and that while your soldering tends to get caught onto it so now we've got the soldering iron nicely heating itself up let's proceed with desoldering this thing because uh, yeah I'm gonna desolder the wires from it and then I'm going to resolder the wires I'm just gonna move this a little to an angle there so you can see things I apologize if uh, I go off camera sometimes I've got a little wiring situation here too in that my uh, soldering iron has got a really short wire have we got up to temperature yet no we have not so I'm just gonna adjust it a bit more thankfully I got an adjustable soldering iron but given that I don't do a lot of soldering work like this I don't think it's worthwhile in me investing in say a soldering station now another little thing I did notice is that these little uh, LEDs there some of them are no longer working but having a look at them now they are the tiny board soldered I think they're called SMD type LEDs which I am definitely not equipped to handle so yeah I won't be doing anything to those just waiting for my soldering iron to get up temperature here which it is it doing that I mean is anything happening I it's definitely smoking okay so let's get the solder sucker ready yep that's coming off I think it is let's see if it can desold oh I don't need to do anything it just came off straight like that that's nice let's desolder that wire as well and that one very 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 nice I mean that really makes things easy for me that I don't have to be messing around and heating things too much the, the positive terminals taking a little more time than I'd like but so there you are and you can see how much the pack is swelled up I mean I'm gonna dispose of this via e-waste obviously but I'm gonna also tell them and maybe even put a caution label on it because this thing is a bit dangerous I think so I'm just gonna keep it aside there away from where it can get any uh, possible you know unwanted things and in the meantime well what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut the wires off this battery now it always helps to when you're cutting battery wires don't do this so what's going to happen is as you do that your cutting wire cutter is metal so if momentarily you're going to short those two wires out instead do this cut them one at a time so yeah to reiterate don't do this this is bad this will short it out do this one at a time okay now we've got that cut and ready I'm just going to use my wire cutters once again to strip off the insulation so we've got the plus and the minus there keeping the battery down once again taking care that the wires don't touch each other for some reason when you have two wires of a battery or some other thing carrying power together they seem to have a rather magnetic attraction towards each other so yeah remove them like that and uh, let's just have a look and see what kind of voltage we are dealing with here shall we okay let's just set our meter to uh, 20 volts dc just to see what we've got in these batteries okay 3.83 so that one's pretty charged this fellow let's see what this fellow can offer us 3.84 very nice very very close so that means I don't have to worry about you know unwanted things happening due to miss or uh, improperly charged battery so then now what we do is we make our BM which is we do this here we take two wires and join them there now this is not the best way to join wires ideally I should be soldering these in some way which is precisely what I'm going to do right now let's just Put a bit of solder on the wires just like that there we are keep them nice and toasty just switching off my soldering iron now and i'm going to be right back because i just need to quickly check on my baby daughter who is fast asleep in her cot i have returned and as i suspected my little girl had woken up so i have brought her into my office room but i have put her in her pram because otherwise she'll keep crawling on the floor and then she might pull out a wire possibly the wire for the soldering iron and drop it on her a lot of hazards so now what I'm going to do after I've prepared the battery pack is I'm going to tape the batteries together like this uh, excuse my extremely uh, shoddy work at the moment but uh, 
yeah i'm just gonna tape the battery pack like that there we go yes not the best but so all my wires so the two batteries are gonna sit in there there's a nice sticky pad there that's sweet and let's start soldering but first let's have a look what we've got there so that's b plus or battery plus so my main red wire goes there then bm is where this little thing here i put together here goes and battery minus is over in the corner there i think i'm going to start by fixing battery minus first so what we're going to do is uh, just very slightly trim the wires just a smidge like that and my soldering iron is on so let's get soldering first let's put a little bit of solder on the wire that i want to install keep the battery pack here Ooh, okay i just pricked myself slightly there that's okay i'm just gonna maybe it'll be better if i seat the battery pack as well in there and make sure all these wires don't touch each other okay how are we gonna do this i think this way is a lot more conducive to what i'm trying to accomplish here you can hear my little daughter there just cooing and otherwise making her her cute little presence known to me Saying I'm here, Dada. You may be recording videos, but remember, I command your attention first and foremost. Children are like that, aren't they? They do command your attention first and foremost. Now that doesn't look like the best solder. Okay, it seems okay. I'm gonna chance it. Then the next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just push that down and I'm gonna do a B plus. I hope I'm doing these things uh, properly, though. I won't deny it, I'm a little scared while doing these things because, uh, well, heat and lithium-ion batteries can always be a bit of a dicey recipe as anyone who's had an electric car fire, for example, will tell you. So I'm a little scared when doing this, but well, let's see how it will pan out. It's also getting pretty hot, there are my fingers. Okay, so I've got B plus and B minus in place. So far, nothing has exploded, thankfully. Let's now go for the tricky one, which is BM. Okay, and this is the one I gave a little bit of flux to as well. Yep, that's recording. You know, sometimes when you're doing something, you get those thoughts, like for example, when you're recording a video you think oh man did i start the recording well i just had that right now thankfully this is recording so yeah there we go bm has been attached right not happy with that on bm though as i can still see the wires so i'm gonna put a little more flux on my soldering iron and we're just going to Gently give a little more flux there to cover the wire. So I'm going to do it for the others too. And I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in this iron. I don't think it's as hot as the previous one that I had. So yeah, maybe it's not running as hot as it should. It's maxed out, but okay, here we go. Now the next thing we do to make sure that everything's working properly is, well, we've got our meter, haven't we? Let's take some readings first let's clear this messy place a little bit uh, hang in there baby girl my daughter is getting a little impatient i think it goes to com and plus okay let's see now across these two i should be having about 7.6 yeah figures and across these two i should be having 3.8 and across these two i should also be having 3.8 yep be with you very soon so yes, and all that remains is, let's uh, let's put the hood back on this baby, and let's power it up. Pressing the power button, anything happening? Is it powering on? No, why? Why is it not powering on? Well, I did give it a battery, so what's going on here? Press the button and see. It's holding for 10 seconds. No untoward smells coming from the device either, so uh, 
not sure why it's not powering on after all that. Uh, I hope I didn't break anything. Uh, are there any sold tracers that may have... <coughs> Hang on, baby girl. Nope. Yeah, excuse my daughter's little queens and... Well, I guess maybe I need to plug it into its power supply and see what happens. So I'm going to do that now. So I have plugged it in and as you can see the single LED light that was the only functional one earlier is working now. That means that we've got power going. You can see that the TP-Link Wi-Fi router is working. We can see that my uh, SLT fiber, fiber optic internet connection is working and we can see that my weather station is getting power too. Now to see if the battery backup is working at all, what we have to do is just simply disconnect the power from the device so that and you can see that all the devices are still staying on so what i'm going to actually do is just let this thing charge i'm going to keep the cover off for now so that if anything happens i can see it happening hopefully before things get too spicy and well let's see how it goes now we can see that the blue light is bl it blinked a little bit which means that we are probably at around 60 percent of charge or thereabouts so now those batteries are still being charged a bit more so i will have to monitor them a bit over the next half an hour to one hour at least and see that they're not getting too hot right now they don't feel hot to me i've got all my soldering connections done there so well let's hope for the best okay so it's been about a week since i did the battery upgrade and during that time there have been about two power cuts one of which showed me that the endurance i can expect when it's powering all these three devices weather station fiber optic router and wi-fi router for about two hours a little over two hours i think that's reasonable to expect given that those cells probably aren't really 5,800 milliamp hours as per they were being rated at on the package but uh, overall yeah I think two hours is okay I guess so at least I've got some backup in case the power goes out so there you are hope you enjoyed this video I hope you found it informative if you've got a Mars Riva KP3 as well and as always don't forget to subscribe thanks and have a nice day